Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is a bit of a different video and some of you may know that I have suffered from anxiety for about three years now but I wanted to tell my full story for you because I wrote a blog post about it and it seemed to be really well received and I'll link that below if you want to have a read instead. Um, but I wanted to tell my story. So in the summer of 2014 I noticed that I was a bit more tearful than I had been before and my other half noticed as well so I ended up making a doctor's appointment and explaining what how I felt and all the issues and he sent me away with like a leaflet and kind of he didn't shrug it off as such but he was like okay well we'll see how it goes kind of thing well I went back a couple of times again because nothing seemed to be helping and he put me on to CBT, which is Cognitive, cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Um, so I had to wait for a referral for that. And it was probably late November that I heard from them. So it had been a while since I'd first gone to the doctors. And she sorted weekly sessions out for me over the phone. Um, which I don't think worked for me because I like to put a face to her voice I think that would have been a bit more reassuring but this is the way that it was done and the first couple of weeks went perfect they were amazing I got given techniques to use I got told to write things down that had gone wrong in the day or how I'd felt or if I'd had like a feeling to write it down to know exactly how I felt um, and then it came to I think it was like two days before my third session and this was now I think in December and I was on the phone to my mum and dad and I was watching telly at the same time Liam was doing overtime at work at the time Lily was in bed this was about 8 o'clock at night and the advert for Sainsbury's I think it was where it was the 100th anniversary of the football match between Germany and England like the soldiers um, the Christmas Day match came on and for some reason my mind went into complete and utter overload and just imagined that every single person that was dead which obviously they probably are but I was kind of watching it and I don't know like their memory is going to be held forever I don't know what really was going through my head but I started hyperventilating I felt sick I felt like I needed to go toilet um, my head was rushing I was dizzy and I just couldn't understand what was happening to me or my body. My mum was, my dad passed my mum on because she can usually calm me down. Um, but she was really struggling to like talk me down. Like she was really getting kind of agitated because my mum could never climb stairs. She was in a wheelchair most of my life. And she was getting really agitated that she couldn't help. So she decided to end the call for a while. At this point, I was literally walking around the flat like a lunatic saying I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I can't breathe and I could, obviously could breathe a bit because I was able to speak but in the back of my mind I was, I didn't know what was happening I thought like it was literally just, I was gonna collapse and I remember feeling really really sick so I kept going to the bathroom, I kept going to the toilet and it just kept going so I ended up trying to find the paperwork for my, um, like the company that was working with me and my CBT Obviously they were closed at this time of night. There was another number which was an out and hours number. Again, they were closed and that number said about calling the Samaritans, which I was a bit nervous about, but I did. And this lovely gentleman answered the phone and I was like, I don't even know if this is the right person to call, but please listen. And he did, that is all he did. He just listened to me at first, calmed me down a bit and then tried to take my mind off of it. So he asked me about, if I had a family and what my plans were for the next few days and if I'd like more children because obviously I mentioned Lily and he really calmed me down and then I heard Liam's car outside at this point it was like it was nine o'clock because Liam used to finish work at nine and I could hear his car like pull up outside and I'm like the relief that washed over me was unreal so I like kind of said thank you to the bloke I was like my other half's at home now I'm, I'll be okay I went, I'm not on my own. So I ended that call and then I phoned mum straight back um, 
to which point I was like, Liam's home and can you tell him what's happened because I don't think I'll be able to without starting it off again. Which he did and he just literally, he was amazing. He sat down with me, he um, just hugged me and told me that everything was going to be alright if I needed to sit up for as long as I wanted. Um, but I am not going to lie, that is the scariest thing I've ever gone through and I've had two major ones since. So I haven't had many major ones, I've had lots of little ones, I'm not going to lie again. But um, that was my very first panic attack and it was the scariest thing ever because I didn't have a clue what was happening to me. Well I went back and I told my CBT lady and she tried to give me some coping techniques. Uh, obviously a few weeks later it was Christmas day and I felt a bit iffy in the morning. I always feel a bit iffy around this time of year anyway, I don't know whether it's just because it's hype of everything and it's time when all the family comes together and I've always been an overthinker, always, ever since I was a young girl. So um, I don't know whether it was a combination of that but I felt really iffy when we were driving to my mum and dad for Christmas dinner and then the day happened, Christmas dinner was lovely, opening presents was amazing, seeing Lily's face light up with all her toys that she'd got was absolutely amazing. We got her to sleep and then the evening came and I felt wash well, of panic come over me. I have no idea why. But the idea that starts it off so I kind of have an idea why, but I don't understand why I feel feel about this. Is I think that it's nothing after. I just see the blackness, the, the nothing, and I don't mean to scare anybody, please don't don't be because I'm, I know exactly what like that feels like. Other people believe in like other stuff, but my mind just sees nothing, and that really, really, really scares me. Not so much these days, um, but I will go on to another story in a second. But yeah, anyway, so Christmas Eve, the Christmas Day, we got home, started calming down, and a wash of panic came over me, and I felt sick, needed the toilet, started hyperventilating again started going dizzy well Liam tried to calm me down and all of a sudden I was like I'm gonna throw up and I actually physically threw up three times um which was horrible absolutely horrible but I got through that that night um Liam managed to calm me down we had some chocolates watched a lovely film and he really calmed me down um, but I went back to the doctors at this point and he put me on to citalopram 10 milligram, which is an anti, not an antidepressant, but an anti-anxiety. Um, this seemed to work really well, but sadly two of my family members that died in that January and I could not attend their funerals because I was so worried about having a panic attack at their funerals and just messing up everything. Well, that month I had loads of mini panic attacks, so it would be like a two, three minute long panic attack, which was nothing compared to the other two. One had obviously lasted almost an hour and one was about 20, 25 minutes. Um, but I'd feel a wash of panic come over me, I'd be lying on the bed, or I'd be in the front room and I'd have to take a few minutes, or I'd have to walk out the room, take my mind off of it, calm myself down. Um, but the Salopram worked really well and I was on them for about a year. And I slowly took myself off them because at first if I forgot a pill I would feel really panicky. And then I got to the point where I was missing pills and I wasn't even worried about missing a pill. Um, and I sort of thought then, then I must be getting better. Well I came off them, I still had calms which are amazing by the way. Um, and they worked really well for me. Um, I haven't really felt a lot since until the day that I found out my mum was like not gonna make it. I remember having a, ma a minor one because I didn't fully know the ins and the outs. Lily was in the house, It was she was wide awake, no one else was here, Liam was helping a friend and then I was like I need to sort myself out, I need to calm myself down for Lily, I need to sort myself out for myself and I need to find out the ins and outs of what's gonna happen. Um, so obviously ever since that I was a bit numb to begin with. Um, I've been very tearful since because for obvious reasons um, but I think it was about two and a half weeks ago I was cleaning my teeth quite a normal thing to do obviously and all of a sudden my mind went to what if you don't wake up in the morning and 
I had a major panic attack that night and I mean I haven't had one since January of 2015 so this was a complete shock to the system this was a bit more violent this panic attack I'm gonna say um, I don't know whether it's just a combination of everything this year like losing my mum and the stress of everything losing a family friend as well I don't know whether it's just a combination of the whole lot put together but I felt a burning sensation through my whole body um, it starts off with the feeling sick and the need in the toilet but this one I literally I started again hyperventilating and then I just felt this warmth go through my veins and it wasn't a nice warmth it was like a pain warmth go through all my veins and into my chest into my head I was really dizzy I had to sit down and it took me a long while to stop feeling these this warmth in my body like this hotness and this was like horrible like my body really ached like I'd literally been it was literally like a burning pain like you burn yourself on a stove or you pick up something that's obviously really hot and I felt it through my whole veins and it was disgusting like the feeling um but again Liam calmed me down I can now think of like the idea of dying quite normally um, I have coping methods and I think at first when mum passed like she looked so peaceful that it kind of helped so I don't really know what this last moment was about but I am able to control my sort of anxiety now and my panic attacks um, but I wanted to come on really and tell you my story and explain my symptoms for a panic attack because I've had three different panic attacks and all three have been different like major panic attacks and all three have been different which puts to me that people might be having them and not even realizing and if you have the same sort of feeling as me I'd love to sort of know just so I, I know I'm not fully on my own and maybe it helps someone else to know that they're not on their own having this feeling of the fear of dying like it scares the hell out of me still um, it's more the idea of leaving Lily now than it was when I first started panicking about it but it's still there and it still makes me shake at night sometimes only like for seconds and I can kick myself out of it normally um, but yes so I just wanted to come on and tell my story share it with you all um, and I'm hoping it will help someone maybe but um, Yes, thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again very, very soon. Bye.